Okay, so. Um, hi, hello. Uh, my name is Anja Milosavljevic, and I'm going to be your host for today. And uh, my very dear friend and my first guest is going to be Fang, and she comes from China. So, Fang, how are you? Hi, Sonia. I'm here in Shanghai, and uh, I'm very glad to be your guest to talk with you about the COVID thing. And yes, I will uh, answer your questions, and you can ask me whatever you want to know about me, my country, my city, or everything you are interested in. Thank you so much. So, um, what do you do? Can you tell us something about yourself? What do you do? Uh, what is your educational background? Uh, and at the moment, what's your position in the company you work at? Okay, uh, so my brief introduction. My name is Feng Yu, F-E-N-G-Y-U, so you can call me Feng. And I'm now a managing editor with the Global Times Shanghai Newsroom. Uh, the educational background, I graduated from Shanghai International Studies University, major in communications and journalism. And I also had a, attend, uh, participated in several certificate programs, uh, one semester in the U.S. University of Missouri, also majored in journalism. and. Um, now my job is the newsroom editor and we cover especially the international news. Uh, the COVID news is also the focus for the current uh, period. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, how is life in China uh, after, the, um, after the COVID, after the break of the COVID-19 uh, virus? How does life in China look now? Um, okay, I have to say that there are a lot of changes pre-COVID and the po we can... Now it's not that uh, accurate for us to say post-COVID period, mm -hmm. but uh, we can say that uh, China has I think uh, recovered from the COVID and uh, people or our production are back to normality. Like uh, uh, we usually say that the work resumption issue. Right now mm -hmm. we can say it's something like more than 90% resumption of our work. That mm -hmm. means that uh, for majority of our people, life also goes back to normalcy. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. And it happened very fast, actually. So did your government help you in any way to recover? Because in Serbia, once COVID started to spread, uh, the economy, it looked like the economy stopped for a month or two. So. What was the situation in, in China? How, how uh, I mean, it's amazing if you managed to recover so fast. So were there any kind of measures that uh, your government and your state gave to, uh, I don't know, enterprises, companies, small scale businesses? What was the what, 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 what was their attitude? How did they help the, the economy to recover? Were there okay, any kind uh, of special measures, uh, help in terms of um, uh, giving money to some small business owners, or how did it look like? Okay, um, I have to say that, as you mentioned, for the very beginning one or two months, the economy, yes, was put to a full stop, mm -hmm. like uh, nobody it's like uh, to something unknown or unprecedented. We don't know how to deal with. Thus, according to the advice from government or from the top uh, uh, 
uh, how to say the epidemiologists,、mm-hmm. they think that、uh, social distancing is very important. Then, yes, at the very beginning, we they are not, we didn't work. Every business, almost every business, is stopped. But、uh, we have to say that it's the joint efforts between the government or the policy maker. Makers and the general public,、uh, Chinese people, when we are facing this epidemic, we follow the advices from our government. Just like、uh, it's maybe hard for、uh, Western people to to imagine the whole city we or the whole country with a population of one point four billion. People just stay at home. We didn't go out. Then it's like the trend can be changed. We do not see when we find this measure, say just like the self quarantine thing, the self isolation is effective. Then we just follow it and strictly obey it. I mean. Here I would like to say there are always extreme cases, but the majority majority of the general public just did as required. Then we find it's quite effective. Then people just did that, and we find it's great. We saw very few or less cases, and then. The policymakers know it will be never a long-term policy to stop production. Then we resume our production and the work just gradually, like step by step.、Mm-hmm. At the very beginning, only very urgent departments can work, and then. Step by step, it goes to the daily lives, and it goes to the daily. And also, at the same time, a lot of efforts or measures were taken, like、uh, disinfection. Can you can,、mm-hmm, can, can you just、uh, tell us what kind of measures are they? Something that we also. Uh, practice here, or do you have any special kind of measures? Like we are practicing social distancing, and we are washing our hands maybe、uh, yeah, more often、hands. than yeah, yeah maybe more often. And we are wear masks. <laughs> yes. So,、uh, do you have any other special measures that you take? <clears throat>、mm, it's like、uh, we also call as a close loop, uh, mm-hmm. like. Uh, Uh, how to say? It's always close. Previously, we are open. Then it's close. Like for example, for example, in our office building, right now, no foreign, no not foreign, no strangers or people who do not work here can enter at the very beginning. But now, visitors or guests or, for example, our interviewees can come, but、mm-hmm. they have to have their temperature. Measured or screened, and they have to write down their personal information or contact information. Oh, and also, I would like to say something、uh, very useful. We have the health code. Can、health、you explain?、Code. Yeah,、Can、yeah, you, yeah.、Uh-huh. Uh, to yeah, yeah, to be.、Mm, it's like a.、Uh, it's just a big data issue. Hmm. It's yeah, because with all of like the information from your mobile phone, we have previously we know、uh, the mobile phone carrier. They can know where your mobile phone has gone in the past, for example, two or three weeks.、Mm-hmm. Then it's like、uh, okay. According to your mobile phone, they know you were, for example, I was in Sichuan province last week, or two weeks ago I was in Hangzhou, and then in my during my、uh, trip in Sichuan, upon arrival in at the airport, they would like me to register 
like where do you from? Where do you live? And where have have you ever been to in China? We also categorize as okay, high risk areas, middle、mm-hmm. risk areas, and the low risk areas. And right now, I don't think、uh, there. Are, I I I think a very very small portion places. For example, maybe Hong Kong or maybe、uh, Xinjiang. There are if there are still infect、uh, confirmed cases of COVID nineteen, then this place maybe. But this is not a big place. It's just the very designated place, like maybe a street or a neighborhood. If this place is defined or categorized as middle or high le- high level risk,、mm-hmm. then. People from there are usually not allowed to leave leave the region to、mm-hmm. prevent the possible spread of the oh, oh. virus. And、uh, people me, outside,、mm-hmm. yes,、uh, are people concerned、uh, about being actually? I cannot say followed, but if if somebody knows where I was. And how long I stayed there, and what are my movements during the I don't know week or a month? Were there any concerns in general population, or did the, people just accept the, it?、Mm-hmm. I I I got your meaning. Yes, <laughs> it's about、uh, the privacy issue, right? Or the security issue?、Mm-hmm. Yes, of course. For example, for example, take me as an example. Mm-hmm. I will be concerned. Why should you follow, or why should I be something like a monitored or、yeah. known by others that I was here or why I was there? Previously, maybe people will have this concern, but、uh, as I mentioned at the big at just now, the big data for us for the general public we accept. Mm-hmm. Especially when we are facing public crisis like COVID nineteen, we know that the personal privacy can be put aside if we、mm-hmm. can protect the general public. So for me, I don't hear personally. I don't hear much objection toward this, like、uh, you know. Uh, as I said, there are extreme cases. People will lie. People will cheat. If it's just lie, it's just cheat. You won't hurt others. No problem. But if because of your lying, because of you hide something, many more people or many more lives or properties will be damaged or how to say hurt. That's something not good. Then I think that's why it's the joint efforts that the majority public would follow. It's、mm-hmm. even if we sacrifice our privacy, no problem. I think、okay. I, I represent yes. Then because of this, even if you do not want to speak out, the system knows it, and if there is the possibility of the risk, you will be. Detected and measures can be taken. Then, including you, you yourself, and most of people around you are safe.、Mm-hmm. So I think it's effective. But what are the consequences if you、uh, don't allow that big data? What are the consequences for the normal, ordinary person or、uh, who doesn't obey to that rule to just be followed? Are there any、oh, kind of consequences? It's like, for example, if you lie, you、mm-hmm. you went to a high. For example, if you went to a middle or high level risk, yes, you didn't tell others. For example, maybe you drove your own car. You didn't、mm-hmm. take a train. Then you do not need to be registered.、Mm-hmm, That's the、okay. way. Yeah, and then. But if if there are people around you, 
or there are cases around you. There and they found that you may be the person who spread this virus. There will be consequences, like、mm-hmm. from administrative punishment to criminal punishment,、mm-hmm. based on the sequences. How how cons how bad results you have led to. If no bad results, maybe no problem.、Mm-hmm. If because of your Reviewing or your lie, other people's lives or were 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 threatened, then there will be punishment. Legal, you will be legally responsible for. Yes.、Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you. That's interesting. So tell me, where do you remember? Where were you when uh, uh, COVID nineteen started to spread? Do you do you remember the,、uh, the yes, moment yes, when you heard the the news? What was、it's、your reaction? Very, yeah, it's very impressive. Like uh, uh, in January, it, this January twenty nine for me is it's really how to say. I I accompanied my daughter to study in the University of Southern California. In January, I stayed in the states for. Five or six days, and then she stayed in the states, and I went back、uh, to China, and then I began to began my business trip to my headquarters in Beijing. That's in the middle of January. Then we can heard information about this mysterious SARS-like disease. At、mm-hmm. that time, it's just like the 2003 SARS. We know it's something infectious. We know, and there are rumors. People would like to say something really, really terrible happened, but at that time, we had very limited information, and because of the sources of the information are different, so we are confused. We don't know. We know something happened, but we didn't know how serious what this something is. So、and、where then, did you go?、Mm-hmm. Sorry.、Uh, when I was my last day in Beijing, I think was January twenty first, and、uh, I was going to be back to Shanghai with my colleague. Just about around that. Several days in the newsroom of our newspaper in Beijing headquarters, we knew it's something terrible. We have to, we had to take、uh, precautious measures. I remember very clearly before we took our train from Beijing to Shanghai. I went to a, a supermarket just around the corner of our newspaper. There are plenty of masks at very low price, so I just bought twenty because it's very cheap and it's it's like only how to say thirty uh thirty Chinese cents per piece, so it's several cents of dollars or euros, very very cheap and 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 I think. Okay, because it's something like instant or for one use. So I asked them how much. What's the package? They told me, okay, it's twenty pieces per package. They asked me, would you like to just buy one or buy a package? Then I said, okay, give me a package because it's just several yuan, less than one euro, less than one dollars, one dollar twenty masks, and I purchased a package. And I shared with my colleague. We took the train, high speed train from Beijing to Shanghai. That's January twenty first. Less than half passengers on the train wore masks. So I think it's a very, it, it's something very interesting. Like at that period of time. About half people were cautious about it, 
and still another half didn't take it serious because according to how many people are wearing were wearing masks and then when we went back to shanghai we had our like a annual dinner party it's something like the last dinner party of our last working day because the uh, spring festival the most important festival mm -hmm. in china falls on year 20 january 24th this year so on january 22nd shanghai colleagues we had a dinner party we went to a japanese restaurant it's like we still had the performance we still have somebody like to give some sentence for the year it's very it's still very regular we think uh, we will think uh, it's safe it's no problem it's just a regular last working day thing but it turned out to be not that the case <laughs> then yeah then because and then i think on january 23rd my family drove back uh, to our hometown for our spring festival usually we spent uh, a week for the whole week long holiday we will be in our hometown to be with our family members and just uh, eating drinking or even gambling it's totally relaxation but we find that it's uh, like uh, more and more information is revealed on our television and on our own personal social media accounts like the news and the rumors mixed it's mm -hmm. like uh, it's like uh, we felt that it's terrible especially because i am a journalist so I i'm very interesting sorry but i'm very interested to hear you're a journalist you're a representative of media and media plays uh, a great role in uh, educating people or telling them what to do and how to behave in these uh, situations like the COVID-19. So were your media responsible enough? You're, you're mentioning rumors and the mix of rumors and, and, uh, and the media. So who did you believe? Where did you turn to uh, for uh for for information and where uh, do you find uh who is i don't i don't want to say i don't want to use the word responsible but um did anyone uh approach to the problem uh to the problem seriously enough uh i think yes it's like uh, because uh, now information is anywhere it's not like in okay 20 years ago or 30 years ago you can hide something because you can't hide anything that's what we what, what it's like okay the big data just like what i had said okay it's big data or it's the flow of information so yes as a journalist we try our best to approach people in wuhan we know that okay that's the first place or first city in china the covid 19 broke out we tried our best to approach residents or medical staff in wuhan and also we tried our best as the media we tried our best to approach uh, experts renowned experts ask their opinion how do they judge yes mm -hmm. it's really hard because uh, right now we can see okay it's infectious it's highly risky at that time even the authority or the experts i think they are also split some people think it's mm -hmm. something very serious some people think it's uh, maybe a little bit more serious than flu so i do not want to say the responsibility of this guy or that expert given the situation when you were faced with something you totally have no idea previously it's like uh, the, we have to experience a confusing period and then 
I would like to say that、uh, the uh, medical, the top medical advisors and the teams responded very quickly when they got the how to say the the the, the, the how to say the. I I'd like to make it、uh, simple or brief. Like、uh, when they got the scientific、uh, gene or analy- analysis of the COVID nineteen or the coronavirus issue, they made it public and they just、uh, made some very quick、uh, or smart and wise decision, like、uh, the lockdown of Wuhan.、Mm-hmm. I think that's.、Uh, th- That issue, like、uh, people would like to say, it's double edged, because it's like okay, you sacrifice Wuhan people, you save the people from other parts. It's like、uh, if、uh, people or experts, God knows that、uh, in Wuhan the situation is quite、uh, uncontrollable. If、uh, people from Wuhan went to other places. Then the virus will be spread to all other places. Then I think they made the decision to lock down Wuhan on January twenty fifth. That's a very strong signal to people. I think around the world that it's it must be something really really serious. China took this measure and.、Uh, Yes, it caused a panic for us. It's something like、uh, we don't know what really happened, and we don't know what、uh, happened there will be related to us in elsewhere. Did you panic, your friends, your family? Did you panic? Did you、yes. have that kind, the sense of、uh, anxiety of not knowing what's going to happen tomorrow or in a month? Did you? Because here, people in Serbia. Uh, we had basically mixed feelings. Some of us had anxiety issues. How was in China? How was how was it with you? Exactly the same, because we don't know. It's something you know. The more mysterious the virus is,、mm-hmm. the more panic people will feel. Also, anxiety. The same. Exactly the same. We don't know. For example, it's like、uh, we don't know whether you are safe, whether people around us are safe. For example, I don't know whether my husband has has contacted somebody maybe dangerous. It's like、uh, you are living in panic.、Mm-hmm. Yes, that's the that's the stage、uh, we experienced. I have to admit.、Uh, We are afraid. We are panic, and、uh, also we try to know what really happened. And the more we we want to find the information online or on our social media, the more we feel depressed, oppressed. Yeah, it's the same here. So you said that the. China economy、uh, recovered, or ninety percent of the economy and enterprises recovered. But、um, what about the small businesses?、Uh, did they change? Did they transform?、Um, here in Serbia, we are witnessing that、uh, digitalization is a very important part of the of、uh, developing our businesses right now. So,、um, how did、uh, how did your small or medium sized businesses transform? Do you have any information? Did they change any、uh, their values, their、um, attitudes toward、uh, their consumers or buyers? Can you can you feel? Can you see the change in running the business in business models, basically? Sure, sure. Because as you mentioned, yes, the medium or small sized businesses are affected very, very, how to say, severely by the COVID nineteen.、Uh, usually, the business, the small businesses, have very limited cash flow.、Mm-hmm. They have to pay something like okay, the rental. 
the utility and especially the human resources because of course they hire some people and uh, when there are no business how much do you pay your colleagues or your employ employees a lot of problem yes and uh, then how did you had, manage how, how did they manage to overcome those obstacles did they okay how, how, how did they change how did they yes. transform it's like uh, it's like also a joint efforts like uh, the government tried the best to persuade the property owners to how to say to reduce or even exempt the rental fee because mm -hmm. in big cities like Shanghai or Beijing it's quite huge amount of money because you do not have your business businesses are shut while if the landlord still would like to ask you to pay the same as for example in November or in December that's unbearable then one point is that the government tried the best. Then in China, we have state-owned property and privately-owned properties. So one of the advantages is that all of the state-owned property owners were required to exempt or reduce for example, three months of rental to their businesses. Or to, yes, that's very, very important for the survival of the small businesses. But if the property owner, he is a private owner, like mm -hmm. I'm not state-backed, it's my own, own money. I purchased this, for example, three-story building then the government would like to encourage friendly negotiation between the landlord and the rents mm -hmm. tenants so i know that uh, there are like uh, good negotiations because the landlord also know it's hard time for everybody mm -hmm. if i would like still to how to say to claim the same amount of money from you you won't survive you leave maybe next month and if the situation goes on for the following blah 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 months no one will be here so why not i be kind enough okay you pay for example maybe i will give you 30 percent or 40 percent or even higher percentage something like uh, good policies yes that's that's something i know that uh, in big cities and in small cities yes there are good agreement between the two sides so that's okay. one point and the other point as you mentioned it's something people outside help you and the businesses they also tried their best to survive like uh, for example, many people began the live streaming business. Mm -hmm. It's like you have to, yeah, yeah it's like uh, you are staying at home. You couldn't go out. You dare not go out. We couldn't. Uh, previously, I purchased my coat, my shoes, maybe in a shopping mall. But uh, I have a lot of shoes if I am the seller. I have a lot of shoes or clothes, but nobody will come to my shop. How can I do? I, I just would like to, okay, like now I will try to find a lot of live streaming platforms in China. This is the only industry, not, not the only, this is one of the industries that made a lot of money. It's like, okay, during crisis, challenges and opportunities exist together mm -hmm. so yes like the live streaming platforms and the live streamers like okay i try to sell my code my whatever products i have online 
I would like to show them just in front of, just like what we are doing now, in front of a video or just a mobile phone. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, you show them and you tell them the function of your products. Or if it's the service, you still can. Then people, because people still need the daily necessities. So of course. people can order online. Yes, so that's the very important method or the transformation Chinese people, like uh, including officials from remote villages help to promote, for example, maybe potatoes or watermelons or grapes. And then I think a very important issue is that you need the support of logistics. Of course, I mean, that's the, my next question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the trend. Uh, yeah. th th yeah, th that's have... money consuming. Uh, logistics is money consuming and time consuming to organize it. Do you have any uh, example of, uh, or a good yes. example of? Uh huh. Can you share? Yes, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, uh, there is one Korea during the epidemic that wins or the staff from that industry wins the heart of the whole country the delivery man and the courier guys. Because when we are staying at home, either I'm the buyer or the seller, I just click on my screen. <laughs> I make my order and then how can I get my stuff, my goods, my food. A large number of, I think a lot of delivery men and the Korean, they were still on their position. They work, okay? They got your got the commodity or the shoes or clothes from the seller. And then the whole industry didn't stop. That's something really, really amazing. The whole industry didn't stop. Then I can get my issue. Maybe before I got it in three days or in two days. Now, maybe in one week, but I still can get that. Maybe a little bit expensive, but that's the cost we can afford. So, mm -hmm. yes, I think that's something really, really important. This is the chain or the knot that make the ends, the selling and the buying possible to, to, to something like, okay, at last, it's like in this circle, you get to here, get to there. Otherwise, it's like you never know. You know, you, you have the supply, you have the demand, but they couldn't meet. So the yes, this is a very important. Uh, I think uh, people say that, uh, okay, previously, I think maybe they are not uh, that polite. They are rudely entreating my commodities. <laughs> But now, they pe it's like uh, the comments from the public. Uh, I appreciate their efforts. They are still something like, okay, in the wind, in the rain, they are knocking our doors and they put uh, my stuff in front of my door. Yeah, so that's really interesting. It is. So we, we are almost at the end of our conversation. I would say, uh, I would have just one more question. For you, can you tell us uh, something about the uh, ladies that run businesses in China? Uh, is it usual for uh, women to start their own businesses? Are they um, focused on tech startups or uh, food industry or any other kind of industry, any, any other branch of industry? Uh, so that would be the question. And for the the, the, the end, you uh, I would like you to just send a message for people in Serbia okay. and all over the world, not just for Serbia, but all over the world. Thank you. Yeah. So um, first of all, I would like to say entrepreneurship uh, didn't uh, di distinguish, okay, or it's a woman or it's a man. And because of the COVID-19, I would like to say it's not that bad for women because family members don't go out that frequently. So 
when we are home office, when we are avoid avoiding so um, crowding, yes, we we have more time to be with our family members. At the same time, you can also you can still focus on your job. You can communicate with your clients or with your partners or business friends. So don't uh, just uh, think of the negative or the bad side of the COVID nineteen. Still, there are something can give us hope, and uh, yes. We can do these two things together. We, we, I don't go out to we meet my clients, or I do not have so many business trips. So I think uh, uh, there is not a preferential okay for women or for men. Most of of us are just uh, equal. We can try mm -hmm. to realize our dreams. This is one point, and the other point, as you said, that. Uh, the signal or the information to people in Siberia and also people in the world. I hope that uh, the COVID nineteen can be can pass very soon, not too late, because it really, really affected everybody's life, every everyone's life even at the cost of the family members of many of us around the world. It's a sad thing. It's never a good thing. And uh, another signal or attitude I would like to express is that uh, we all know the first COVID-19 outbreak appeared in China. But we, as a Chinese, I would like to express that uh, it doesn't mean China is the origin of the virus or China or Chinese people invented or spread the virus. I think uh, scientists and uh, epidemiologists will tell the truth not too late. So we Chinese people, we suffered a lot from this disease because uh, we are the first country to have this outbreak without any model or example for us to follow. We try our best to curb or control it uh, quite effectively. So, and then we share all of the experiences with the world. So we hope that uh, the whole world can work together. Don't uh, politicize this virus. The like okay, human beings still need to look forward, and uh, yes, we will have the whole world will have the vaccine just later or soon. Or for example, the efficiency maybe this is of the very top quality. This is but uh, maybe within half a year, it's over. But uh, we don't know next time what kind of common disaster we will face again. Thank you, Fang. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Thank you for uh, staying at your office long, longer hours because it's a six hours difference between Belgrade and, and Shanghai. So thank you for your time and thank you for um, uh, actually wanting to participate in this project. I'm sending you uh, love, hugs and kisses from Belgrade. And I will definitely talk to you soon after the, the the filming and after the shooting okay thank you also and also thank your team and the, your staff to work on this program to encourage the people around the world yes let's hope together it will be better thank you yes i hope so i hope so too ciao thank you so ciao. much bye